Janma Dhyasya Yatam Vayari Taratas Chatir Sabhigyaswara Tenne Brahma Vrudaya Adhika Vayemo Janti Jasuraya Tejo Varimrida Jata Vinimayo Jatra Krisa Gumrusa Namna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyang Param Vimahi O oh my Lord Shri Krishna Son of Vasudeva O oh my Lord Shri Krishna Son of Vasudeva O all pervading personality of God O oh, all pervading personality of God I offer my respectful obeisances unto you I offer my respectful obeisances unto you I meditate you. upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation sustenance and destruction of the manifested universes of the creation sustenance and destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he's independent because there's no other cause beyond him. And he's independent because there's no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It's he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of a water seen on fire and lamps in the water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reaction to the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction to the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma prochita kaitra vocha. Dharma prochita kaitra vocha. Paramo nirmatsa nam satam. Paramo nirmasara nam satam. Vidyam vastava matra vastu. Vidyam vastava matra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon muvanam. Shivadam tapa trayon muvanam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimva Purir Ishwaraha. Kimva Purir Ishwaraha. Sadyo Hridya Varudya Tetra. Sadyo Hridya Varudya Tetra. Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshana. Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are material motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The truth that the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold misery. Such a truth uproots the threefold misery. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva is sufficient in itself for God realization. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpataror galitam phalam. Nigama kalpataror galitam phalam. Sukhamakad amrita dravya samyatam. Sukhamakad amrita dravya samyatam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam malayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam malayam. Mohur ahoraska bhuvi bhavukaha. Mohur ahoraska bhuvi bhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Shmar Bhagavatam. Mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. Mature fruit, the desire tree of Vedic glory. It emanated from the lips of Shri Sukadeva Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Shri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for including all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. 
Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Shavantam Swakata Krishna Punya Shavana Kirtana Punya Shavana Kirtana Iriantak Stohi Abhadrani Iriantak Stohi Abhadrani Vidu Nati Suhit Satam Vidu Nati Suhit Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures To hear about Krishna from the Vedic literature Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita Is it self-righteous activity? It is self-righteous. And for one who hears about Krishna, for one who hears about Krishna, but Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. No, Krishna is dwelling within everyone's acts heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as best wishing friend. And purifies friend. the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of Him. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of Nasta Him. Nastapraya subhadreshu. Nastapraya subhadreshu. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Bhagavati Uttamasloke. Bhagavati Uttamasloke. Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki. Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kama loba dayas chaye. Kama loba dayas chaye. Chete tare navidam. Chete tare navidam. Stitvam satve prasidati. Stitvam satve prasidati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. And thus, material lusts and avarice become diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Mukta sangha se jayate. Mukta sangha se jayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When these impurities are wiped away. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God. Bidyate hridaya grantis. Bidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Chidyante sarvasam. Siyante chasyakarmani. Siyante chasyakarmani. Drista evatmani shwari. Drista evatmani shwari. Thus bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. That's why it serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enable them to come at once to the stage of some shares of Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee and Krishna Therefore, consciousness. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna and his devotee, Krishna consciousness. Can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 18, Text and Number. Seven. Nanu dvesti kalim samrat. Nanu dvesti kalim samrat. Saranga eva sarabuk. Saranga eva sarabuk. Kushalanya susidyanti. Kushalanya susidyanti. Nitarani kritaniyat. Nitarani kritaniyat. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> Maharaj Prikshit was a realist, like the bees who only accept the essence of a flower. He knew perfectly well that in this age of Kali, auspicious things produce good effects immediately, whereas inauspicious acts must be actually performed to render effects. So he was never envious of the personality of Kali. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada. The age of Kali is called the fallen age. In this fallen age, because the living beings are in an awkward position, the Supreme Lord has given some special facilities to them. So by the will of the Lord, a living being does not become a victim of sinful act until the act is actually performed. In other ages, simply by thinking of performing sinful act, a sinful act, one used to become a victim of the act. 
On the contrary, a living being in this age is awarded with the results of pious acts simply by thinking of them. Maharaj Pariksit, being most learned and experienced king by the grace of the Lord, was not unnecessarily envious of the personality of Kali because he did not intend to give him any chance to perform any sinful act. He protected his subjects from falling prey to the sinful acts of the age of Kali. And at the same time, he gave full facility to the age of Kali by allotting him some particular places. At the end of the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said that even though all nefarious activities of the personality of Kali are present, there is a great advantage in the age of Kali. One can attain salvation simply by chanting the holy name of the Lord. Thus, Maharaj Pariksit made an organized effort to propagate the chanting of the Lord's holy name, and thus he saved the citizens from the clutches of Kali. It is for this advantage only that the great sages sometimes wish all good for the age of Kali. In the Vedas also it is said that by discourse on Lord Krishna's activities, one can get rid of all the disadvantages of the age. In the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is also said that by the recitation of Srimad Bhagavatam, the Supreme Lord becomes at once arrested within one's heart. These are some of the great advantages of Age of Kali, and Maharaj Pariksit took all the advantages and did not think any ill of the Age of Kali, true to his Vaishnavat, Vaishnavite cult. Srila Prabhupada ki So, there's a saying that uh, Um, the best of, uh, offense is defense. The best offense is defense. That means basically what not Maharaj Pariksha did here. He took advantage of the advantages of Kali Yuga because they were great benedictions by Krishna. There's, they're called dispensations. There's, there are things that give advantages to people who are in a very difficult situation. So he took advantage of that. And there are several points. One is that you do not get a karmic reaction unless you actually perform the, the sinful act. Whereas before, of course, just thinking about it, you got the reaction. And secondly, you get a benefit simply by thinking about following the principles of Dharma. You don't even have to do it. Just thinking about it, you get the, you get the benefit. And then number three, you can become free from the, uh, all the, uh, uh, what you call, scourges of Kali Yuga and also become free from the cycle of birth and death and karma by chanting Hare Krishna. And also, Just simply by listening to the discourses on, on the Srimad Bhagavatam and, Ved and Bhagavad Gita, one can get rid of all the disadvantages of the age of Kali. The recitation of Srimad Bhagavatam, by the recitation of Srimad Bhagavatam, the Lord becomes fixed in the heart of the devotee. So Prabhupada says, these are some of the great advantages of the age of Kali. So Maharaj Pariksit, he uh, took advantage of these great benefits of the age of Kali, even though the age of Kali is very inauspicious and everything 
is wherever you look, there is there are the four regulative principles are broken and glorified. The breaking of them is glorified. The educational system stinks. That's probably the only word you can use for it. It stinks. You know. Look what Prabhupada says about that. He says one second. Prabhupada quotes a doctor, his name was Dr. Anne, who commented on the system of education in India. Prabhupada says, we were pleased to hear Dr. Anne's address at the Calcutta University Convocation on January 12, 1957. Dr. Anne is presently the Honorable Governor of the State of Bihar. An excerpt from his speech follows. Our youth are being brought up in a tradition of veiled contempt for religion and everything religious. Spiritualists and religious devotees are the laughing stock of the educated youth. And as the general masses are religious minded and have great respect and reverence for such devotees and spirituals, spiritualists, they feel generally disgusted with the attitude of the educated class and have no regard for them. The educated class has also no affection for the masses of people whose way of life is mostly molded by religious ideas. The result is that the educated classes have not been able to produce a sufficient number of servants to work with a real missionary spirit for the amelioration or for the, for the improvement of the suffering of the masses. In other words, <laughs> the educational system stinks. It's no good. It's useless. It's leading people in the wrong direction. It is purposely misleading them. And then Prabhupada says, Dr. Anne goes on to say, that the existing academic courses in schools and colleges exclude classes on religion. Or if they do have a few classes on religion, they misrepresent it, as we've heard already. We have included this portion of Dr. Anne's speech taken from a local newspaper because we want to impress upon the reader the urgent need for introducing religious studies in the universities, because in the past, strong objections were raised against including religious classes in the schools. They have been excluded, and now severe reactions are being seen in today's youth. I and mean, Prabhupada is writing this in the 1950s. This is 70 years later, and it's still going on, especially in India more vehemently than even in the United States. It's unbelievable. I think that excluding spiritual studies from education thwarts, in other words, defeats, all chances for the human mind to awaken and blossom. Because of a lack of spiritual education, today's youth are undisciplined students who do not pray or meditate in the early morning and again in the evening, gradually become agnostics. That means they're, they're not, they, they don't have what they consider proof that God exists, so they don't say God exists. They might not even say God doesn't exist, they just don't know, because they've never been educated. And their minds float about aimlessly without purpose. They reject religious ideas and ethics and instead embrace logic and argument as supreme. Often they fall into the vicious grip of some unscrupulous politician. The exclusion of religious courses from the universities is the main reason one does not see nowadays a pure and sublime relationship between the student and the teacher. Many educators 
feel the need for religious education today. A few months ago, on January 18, 1957, we had the op opportunity of meet, meeting Dr. Anne at the government house in Patna, and we had some discussions. Being a pious man, he could appreciate our spiritual topics and offered us full support for our missionary activities, which are aimed at eradicating the demoniac mentality on a wide scale. His recent speech gives us hope of improvement. Possessed of perverted intelligence, the demons, rascals, and fools can never surrender to Lord Krishna. Similarly, Lord Krishna never shows them his mercy. The most munificent incarnation of Godhead, Lord Chaitanya, repudiated the sinner Gopala Chapala because he was envious of the Lord's devotee. That's Haridas Thakur. In this regard, the Supreme Lord states his opinion in the Bhagavad Gita, fourth. Sivas. Huh? His envy is Sivas. Oh, really? Yeah. Not Haridas Thakur? No, Sivas. Okay. Hey, that's a good word. Is he the one who put that uh, plate, the uh, Durga, on his doorstep? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Sivas, okay. yeah. Okay. I think that was the other Brahmin. Gopala, uh, that was uh, Gopala Chakravarti. Uh, yeah, this Brahmin was. Uh, but this was Sivas. <coughs> <coughs> In this regard, the Supreme Lord states his opinion in the Bhagavad Gita 411. As all surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Thus the Lord arranges for the demons to slide lower and lower into degraded species of life and suffer hell for many millions of births. Anyway, that goes on. So you see, this is Prabhupada's opinion about modern education, how it actually stinks. So, therefore, Maharaj Pariksit understood that the best offense is defense. The best offense is defense. So, we have to defend our children. We have to defend any person we meet by giving them a chance to understand Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, the onslaught of demonic concepts, speculative theories, and the uh, aroha panta, uh, trying to ascend through logic, reason, and science to understand what the truth, which is not possible. People are convinced that that is the way today. And it's all due to this modern education. Okay, so I also wanted to explain something else today, and that is um, <clears throat> Prabhupada explains there's two types or two kinds of varna ashram, varna ashrama. There's the demonic type and the transcendental type. <laughs> So you might say, what, what does it mean by demonic varnasrama? I thought it was a spiritual process. Well, uh, mm, Prabhupada says, by the propagation of Brahminical culture, the world would have greatly prospered. Instead, the Vedic culture has been seriously maimed, that means injured, by the imposition of the hereditary caste system. And this has had grievously adverse effects on the world. The Supreme Lord in his incarnation as Lord Chaitanya has opened many avenues to peaceful living by propagating the Brahminical culture, which he calls the religion of the soul. Those who are fortunate can emulate his life, follow his divine teachings, and perfect their lives. So the demoniac varnashram is what's being practiced today in India. It's based on uh, bodily uh, identification. And uh, that bodily identification depends on what family you're born in, 
etc. It doesn't depend on what your qualities are. It depends on what family you're born in, or what is the color of your skin, or what is this or that, all bodily identification. So that is the demoniac Varnashrama. And so Prabhupada continues, Varnashrama Dharma, the system of four spiritual orders and four social orders of life, is of two kinds, demoniac and transcendental. They have nothing in common. The divisions of society mentioned in the scriptures are present at all times and in all lands. If one, with knowledge of the scriptures, scrutinizes the different societies, he can easily discern the four classes. Persons possessing Brahmanical or priestly qualities in varying degrees are seen in practically every society. In modern terms, they are called intellectuals. All the other classes are also present. Therefore, it is an established fact that the four divisions of society according to merit are, were, and will be present everywhere. Those who think that Brahmanas and the other three castes exist only in Indian society are sadly mistaken. The scriptures have declared that in Kali Yuga, everyone is born a sudra or a menial laborer a member of the fourth class. Still, India has many persons endowed with high Brahminical characteristics. And without doubt, such persons are also seen in every other country. Every country has these four classes of men determined according to merit. As a matter of fact, even those who are less than sudras, the chandalas and dog eaters, are eligible to perform devotional service. If a chandala becomes an elevated devotee of the Lord, then on the basis of his merit, he should be respected by all their classes. There is much scriptural evidence in this regard. The Hari Bhakti Vilasa 10.91 states, a devotee chandala achieves the same spiritual success as the devotee Brahmana. And in the Bhagavatam 7.9.10, Prahlad Maharaj says, a devotee chandala is many times more elevated than an ordinary ritualistic brahmana. Indeed, such a devotee chandala can be the guru of the brahmanas. This has been shown throughout history by many spiritual preceptors who were born in a low class, but who initiated persons of higher castes. So the castes are classified according to merit and activity, but a pure devotee of the Lord is beyond all these classifications. He is transcendental to everything material. How can a person who is elevated beyond all castes, a saint, be adequately worshipped if he is worshipped only as a brahmana? Therefore, one has taken shelter of the Supreme Personality Godhead. One who has taken shelter of the Supreme Personality Godhead is the recipient of all good fortune in all countries and at all times. The Bhagavad Gita mentions this in several places. Well, anyway, this keeps going on. <clears throat> but it leads into the next thing I want to talk about, and that is that um, the, the Mayavadis, and there are many different categories of Mayavadis, Prabhupada mentions two big categories. One is the Buddhists, and the other is, are the Mayavadis, or the, uh, the ones who claim that there's no such thing as Vaikuntha or Goloka. There's only the Brahman effulgence. So, the Mayavadis have what are called Mahavaikyas, and the Vaishnavas also have what's called Mahavaikyas. These are uh, uh, these are like small, pithy statements in the Vedas that are pregnant with transcendental, intense knowledge or con concentrated knowledge. Now, uh, one of them is Sarvam Klav Idam Brahma. And Prabhupada being an absolutely brilliant person First of all, let's, let's hear what Sarvan Klavidam Brahma means. It says, 
everything, both matter and spirit, is non-different from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the Supreme Brahman. So right away, the Maya bodies separate matter and spirit. And they say that Sarvam Club Brahman means that there's only spirit, that matter is an illusion. It doesn't really exist. So right away they bifurcate the two. And therefore, one of their Mahabhakyas is Brahma Satyam Jagat Mitya. So that is duality. And they claim to be the champions of oneness. But right away they create a false duality between Brahman and Jagat. So there, if you ever meet a Maya body and say, oh, we, we are Kevala Advaitans. It means we believe in absolute oneness. You say, you are a liar. You are actually a dualist. Say, what? What do you mean? I've never heard this before. Well, yeah, because you think that there's a, there's a bifurcation or a difference between Brahman and Jagat. They said, what do you mean? Uh, Jagat doesn't exist. I said, that's the point. That means you're a dualist. We are the actual oneness. We believe that everything is Krishna, or Krishna is everything, including matter and spirit. Aham sarvasya prabhava matak sarvam pavartate iti matva bhajanti man buddha bhava saman vitaadi. Krishna says, I'm the origin of everything material and spiritual. So, now, now we have the Mayavadis on the run, as they say in English. We pulled the war rug out of, uh, from, their, from their feet. And now they're, uh, they're not sure what, what's going on. They've never heard this before. Yeah, because they never met a devotee before. I just met other Mayavadis because almost 99% of India is Mayavadi. <laughs> what do you expect? Everybody you meet, they think, oh, Yatamat Tatapat. As many ways, as many truths. Whatever you think, it's okay. As long as you accept what I think, I'll accept what you think. And we're all brothers in this conspiracy to undermine the truth. Well, no. So, anyway, the Sarvan Klavidam Brahma, everything, both matter and spirit, is non different from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the Supreme Brahman. Now, this is also explained in Bhagavad Gita in, in several different places. But I'm going to choose one place where you, would, you don't really see it explicitly, although. Once it's pointed out, you say, well, that, yeah, that's right. I, I missed it. So this is 4th chapter, 24th verse, uh, which says, Brahmar panam brahma havir brahma agno brahma nahutam brahmaiva tena gantavya brahma karma samadina. A person who is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom because of his full contribution to spiritual activities in which the consummation is absolute and that which is offered is of the same spiritual nature. Now, I'm going to speak about myself. I didn't understand this for at least 45 years. I've been in the movement 50 years. <laughs> So, I mean, I kept reading it, and it just didn't make sense to me, right? I was not sure exactly what he's saying. I mean, I had a general idea, but it, I always try to avoid talking about this verse because uh, I'm not, I was never really sure what it means. Well, it means sarvam club idam brahma. Everything, both matter and spirit, is non different from the Supreme Person I got it, who is the Supreme Brahman. That's what it means. So, how do we know that? Well, and Prabhupada explains it. In the purport, he explains it. 
to this verse, which is a very wonderful purport. But he also explains it uh, in this other book, this uh, book, Renunciation Through Wisdom. So he says, he says, those who think that Brahmanas and the other three castes exist only in Indian society are sad, sadly mistaken. The scriptures have declared that in Kali Yuga, everyone is born a sudra or a menial laborer, a member of the fourth class. Still, India has many persons endowed with high Brahminical characteristics, and without doubt, such persons are also seen in every other country. Okay, we read that already. Every country has these four classes of men determined according to merit. As a matter of fact, even those who are less than sudras, the chandalas and dog eaters, are eligible to perform devotional service. If a chandala becomes an elevated devotee of the Lord, then on the basis of his merit, he should be respected by all their classes. There is much scriptural evidence in this regard. The Hari Bhakti Vilasa 1091 states, a devotee chandala achieves the same spiritual success as a devotee brahmana. And in the Bhagavatam 7.9.10, Prahlad Maharaj says a devotee chandala is many times more elevated than an ordinary ritualistic brahmana. Indeed, such a devotee chandala can be the guru of the brahmanas. This has been shown throughout history by many spiritual preceptors who were born in a low class, caste, but who initiated persons of higher castes. So the castes are classified according to merit and activity. But a pure devotee of the Lord is beyond all these classifications he is transcendental to everything material. How can a person who is elevated beyond all castes, a saint, be adequately worshipped if he is worshipped only as a brahmana? Therefore, one who has taken shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the recipient of all good fortune in all countries and at all times. The Bhagavad Gita mentions this in several places. Whatever part of the world a person belongs to, if he follows the instructions of the Supreme Lord in the Bhagavad Gita, then he attains the transcendental platform and can become even more elevated than a brahmana. As Lord Krishna says in the Gita 4.24, a person who is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom because of his full contribution to spiritual activities in which the consummation is absolute and that which is offered is of the same spiritual nature. Well, uh, now Prabhupada explains. This verse explains how one can attain spiritual knowledge by performing activities that please the Supreme Lord. Sri Pada Sankaracharya propounded the impersonal theory citing phrases like sarvam klav idam brahma. By nature, everything is brahman, spirit. Sankaracharya's theory has caused great confusion about established scriptural conclusions. But this phrase clearly supports the Gita verse quoted above. At this point, it is urgent that we discuss how one can perform devotional service for the Supreme Lord's pleasure. In this regard, it is also noteworthy how saintly leaders like King Janaka executed karma yoga or devotional service by performing sacrifice. The aim of all sacrifices should be to please the Supreme Lord Vishnu or Krishna. Contact with matter is unavoidable in our present conditioned state because while performing activities to sustain the body and to accomplish other purposes, we become intimate with material nature. But if we can spiritualize these activities by performing every one of them as a service to Brahman, the Supreme Absolute Truth, then these activities become yagya or sacrifice. When the Vedic phrase sarvam klav idam brahma is interpreted in this way, it is acceptable. In other words, when one invokes the spiritual or transcendental or absolute in everything, then matter loses its mundaneness and then only can one realize the perfect meaning of the phrase sarvam klav idam prama. The Vaishnavas say that anything connected with the Lord in devotional service is transcendental. In other words, it is non-different from the Supreme Lord himself, Madhava. 
just as iron in long and constant touch with fire loses the characteristics of iron and becomes fiery. So everything offered in sacrifice to the absolute or the transcendence becomes absolute or transcendental. Now this is, this is the understanding Prabhupada had when uh, eight years later he came to the United States. Now this is, this is he's writing this in 1957, right? So seven, eight years later he comes to the United States and he begins to preach Krishna consciousness on this basis that there are the four classes, the four varnas in every country of the world. And the positioning in the, uh, and he was presenting the divine varnashram system, not the demoniac varnashram system as, as practiced in India. And, and, and he proved that it's possible. I'm one proof of it. You are another proof of it, right? So, I mean, in India, Prabhu, would, uh, Adidev, would you be considered a Brahmana in India? Yes. Yeah, you're born in a Brahmana family? Yes. Sharma. Yes. yes, Sharma's a Brahmana. Yes. Prabhu, would you be considered a Brahmana? No. No. Uh, would you be considered a Brahmana? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be considered a Brahmana in India? <laughs> no. <laughs> Would I be considered a Brahmana? No. <laughs> because it's the demoniac Varnashram system. It's not the real Varnashram system. Real Varnashram system is what Prabhupada established. You know, and, and it was and and Ramanujacharya, which is amazing because Ramanujacharya established it also, right? But his followers today don't follow it. Is that right? Anybody know that to be a fact? Would you agree with that, that the followers of Ramanujacharya today don't follow the... What? Okay. Prabhu? Not everyone, but to follow strictly, they do it. I think people who said speak in South India, All right, speak here, speak here, go ahead. I've seen mixed uh, kind of people in South India, like especially in my place, like you know where they take uh, a Sri Vaishnava initiation, like not the follow the Ramanujacharyas, and they drink coffee, tea, and uh, all the things. And um, I don't see all the things. Yeah, coffee, oh, yes. tea, sometimes oh, yes. alcohol also. I, I've like you know that's what I've seen in my native place. So and they don't ekadashi following they eat. Uh, they don't refrain from grains, rather they eat poha and uh, kind of uh, upma kind I've, of I've thing. seen that also. Yeah, that, that is the thing. So I felt that, okay, uh, whatever we are feel following in ISKCON is the right thing. Then that, that's what my understanding after coming to Krishna consciousness. Yeah, but uh, let me ask a couple questions. Do the Sri Vaishnavas accept non-Brahmana boys and teach no. them the Vedic mantras. No. No. Even that's growing up in school, uh, that's what I was thinking when I was listening to the class. There was always some kind of discrimination between kids because pe the people, the kids who come from the Brahmin family, they think that they are the highest and they always, uh, like, you know, degrade people, like, you know, commenting and some, not everyone, but most of them, like, yeah, you know, no, they but they will not, they will not, I mean, from my experience now, I, I haven't seen everything in India, so I could be wrong. As a, as a kid growing up in school, I always had that complex, oh, okay, I'm not great, like, you know, I'm not born in a Brahmin family. So that kind of thing the Brahmin kids used to uh, induce, like, you know, like. But their Acharya accepted yeah. two, uh, out of five gurus that accepted two of them were Sudras, Sudra. born in Sudra families, but he accepted them as his, as his Siksha gurus. So this point I'm, I'm trying to make is that the demoniac Varnashram system is practiced even by people who should not practice it. They still practice it. 
if they know better mm -hmm. because it's in their history, but they still practice it. And some of the Brahmin kids who I grew up with, they also ate egg, eggs. Yeah. That's I mean, that's, that's besides the point. The point, point is, will the Sri Vaishnavas in South India accept non-Brahmana boys? No. Definitely And not. teach them the Vedic mantras. I have seen in South India, but I don't know here in U.S. and how they follow, but I've seen a different set of people here, but in India they never in, even include them, them as a, like, you know, friends or sometimes they're, like, you know, very close. So they always say that they are not from a Brahmin family, yeah. so we cannot associate with them that kind of uh, thing. They always mingle with the, their own ca yeah, caste well, that's people. Yeah, like... Uh, <laughs> That's uh, what I observe, Maharaj, yeah. but I don't know here, but in India growing up, that's what I observe. Yeah, that's what you observe, yeah. right. Uh, Ramanujacharya left his wife because she insulted one of his six gurus who was not born in a Brahmana family. And he, uh, uh, if I remember the story correctly, he, this, uh, this one of his gurus, who's not a, born in a Brahmana family, uh, comes to meet not Ramana Nujachari, he's not there. And his wife, out of some kind of uh, respect, offers him prasadam. And when he leaves, the remnants, she throws it away. <laughs> and later on, Ramanuja comes and she tells him, well, your guru came here. This person came here. He said, oh, my guru. He said, did you feed him? He said, yes. He said, oh, can, can I have some of the remnants? He said, no, I threw it away. We don't, we don't, we don't eat food that's been, that's been offered to a sudra. He got really upset. He got really upset. And, and, and after that, he left his wife, you know, because she was so disrespectful to uh, one of his gurus. <clears throat> and that she was, you know, because she adhered to that idea that sudras are less, uh, uh, not worthy of certain types of respect that given to uh, real Brahm uh, Brahmanas, born in Brahmana families. All right, anyway. Uh, so here we have uh, today the demoniac Varnashram system and the transcendental Varnashram system. Okay, we'll stop right there. Are there any questions? Yes. Okay, you have to ask the question. Sorry. Sorry. So to be considered as a Brahmana, you have to go through a process, like? You have, to, you have to demonstrate that you have the qualities of a Brahmana. So there's first initiation, and you, you strictly chant 16 rounds, follow the regulative principles. If you do that for a certain period of time, six months to any number of years, and uh, you demonstrate that you know you you're bathing regularly, you're on time, you're taking part in the programs, you're hearing, you're you're learning, you're preaching, and all these things. And then you have a strong desire to worship the deities. Then you take Brahman initiation. It doesn't matter what your background is. You know, it doesn't matter what family you were born in. So my follow-up question, like Prabhu is an, he's actual Brahmana according to the demonic uh, system. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, well, let's not, let's not go too far with that, but anyway, yes. <laughs> yes, I don't know. <laughs> so, so can Prabhu be considered now because Prabhu is chanting as a Brahmana because I'm just yeah, thinking uh, of yeah, the of quality. Course. Anybody, 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 whether they're born in a Brahman family or a Sudra family or Chandala or Malecha or Yavana. I'm, I'm born in a Yavana family, right? I'm not even born in a Sudra family. Yavana is much lower. But anybody who is willing to be trained and sincere, they can become uh, more than Brahminical. 
Vaishnava is superior. Mm -hmm. But we still accept these designations because they have specific rules that have to be followed. So that's to protect us and to protect others from us that we have to follow those rules. Yeah. There's a nice article here in this connection. Yeah. The lecture, I think, by Prabhupada. You um, think? Prabhupada. You're not sure? No, you can't read it. Okay, read. So speak into the microphone. No, I want you to read because speak you into the microphone. I would like you to read it. Yeah. Because it connected to what you're saying about what the qualification. You want me to read it? You can read it. Just speak into the microphone. The Shudra has no initiation. So in India, there are professional gurus. They initiate Shudras, but do not eat foodstuff touched by the disciple. So there are so many things that is inici he's initiated, how he can remain Shudra, but they keep him Shudra at the same time they become guru. Sanatana Goswami gives. Who becomes guru? The sudra? No, those so called gurus. Oh, yeah. Okay. They initiate sudras, but still they, they maintain them, you know. As sudras. Yeah. yeah. So, this question how can they initiate somebody and then you remain sudra? So, it goes on saying Sanatana Goswami gives direction in the Hari Bhakti Vilas that Tathadikya. Vidhanena dvijatvam jayate nrinam. If properly initiated, he becomes immediately Brahmana. Mm -hmm. Abharishuddha. Dvijatvam dvija means second birth. Yata kanchan, kanchanatam. Yati kansyam rasa vidhanatha. There is a chemical process. Purify that, gold. Yeah, bell, it's called bell metal, yeah? We mentioned the other day. Can be turned into gold by mixing with uh, proportionally merc mercury. Mm -hmm. Now, here is a hint. Uh, so it goes on. But basically, that's the idea, basically. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Yeah, it's based on merit. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's based on merit, yeah. Well, but I mean, the point here is that Nobody actually can be. Uh, we cannot. We cannot um, just uh, being qualified by birth. So, the, by, by by the qualification. So here the point is that if somebody may be shudra, but once he's get initiated, properly initiated, he's no longer shudra. He's immediately brahman. Yeah. Well. I, well. But the example is of a brahmana who initiates a sudra but keeps him a sudra. So it's not simply initiation means automatically you are a brahmana. It means before initiation you have to be trained properly. Mm -hmm. Then an initiation is the formality after the training that recognizes that now you have, uh, you no longer. Uh, you know, a, a sudra, now you've become a, uh, at least a brahmana, mm -hmm. and then, and now is the beginning of transcendental e existence because you can go above that mm -hmm. to, to pure Vaishnava. Mm -hmm. So there has to be training. And then after the training, there has to be also supervision. That's why it's important to have a bona fide guru, not a guru who will keep you after initiation a sudra. <laughs> I was just referring to what Madhaji just was saying mm -hmm. about the, uh, right, they don't mingle, you know, they to stay in a day. Basically, segregation, basically. Yeah, they, they don't mix, you know. But again, there's, there's a beautiful uh, song by, 
which is Vaishnava poet, uh, Primananda, you know, he says that when Mahaprabhu came, Mahap Lord Chitana Mahaprabhu came, you know, he, he manifests an amazing scene that you see the Brahmin and the Shudra, they're embracing each other. <laughs> they're embracing each other, you know. And that's the example in, like, in when Prabhupada came to the Western world, you know, and he took his disciples to India, you know. So the mixing set is amazing, you know, that, so basically this Sanatan Dharma or real uh, Brahminical culture is not in terms of uh, castes, you know, it's just a qualification, you know, when you qualify then, and then uh, that's what it is. But it's not, you can't keep somebody because, uh, of their birth. Yeah, because of birth, you know, it's, it's just condemned, you just condemn that person forever, you know, but it's not that. <laughs> Anybody can be raised, like here it's talking about second birth. Second shudra, and then you, when it properly initi get initiated, then that's the second birth. Yeah. Oh, glory to Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Haribo, Haribo, Haribo. Hare Krishna.